Back here in Africa, 44-year-old Senegalese opposition presidential candidate Basiru Domaye Faye is set to become president. Faye, who'd since addressed his first press conference, will now be the youngest president in history, the history of Senegal, I should say. While official results of Sunday's votes were not yet available, the former prime minister, who was the other frontrunner and who was backed by incumbent President Macky Sall conceded defeat based on preliminary results. Sall followed with congratulations, also naming Faye as the winner. Faye's victory reflected frustration among the youth, many of whom have been largely unemployed with concerns about governance in the West African nation. Provisional results showed Faye with about 53.7% and Amadou from the current ruling coalition with 36.2% based on tallies from 90% of polling stations, the first round of votes. The people of Senegal have made the choice of rupture. The Senegalese people have chosen to break with the past to give substance to the immense hopes raised by our vision of society. The people of Senegal well, African Affairs Analyst Achike Chudi joins us now to discuss the conduct of the Senegalese presidential poll and why President Macky Sall's ruling coalition lost to the opposition. Good to have you. Thank you for being here on this day. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Hey, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Like we heard from that excerpt, he did say that the people of Senegal have chosen to break from the past do you see it, this outcome as just that? Yeah, in a way. Uh, but um, again, that is relative. Breaking from the past mm -hmm. is absolutely relative because um, uh, it's a system that has been in place for quite some time and there's nothing revolutionary about from what we have seen. Even from uh, the statements of uh, the new president of Senegal, there is nothing that indicates that uh, there will be a revolutionary shift, a radical shift away from the system. Uh, of uh, doing things in Senegal. Of course, he did make promises, but these are promises that um, every African leader makes. Uh, the usual promises of uh, fighting corruption, uh, you know, f uh, trying to build uh, an you know, a, a sizable economy that would also absorb uh, people into the work uh, space and all that. So they, that, these are just these are the things. But I think if you're talking about breaking away from the past in terms of uh, uh, the leadership, that is the ruling party, then I would say yes. Uh, to a very large extent. Of course, we know how influential our ruling parties have become in African politics, especially when you look at uh, the nature and character of elections uh, within the polity. Uh, the tendency for ruling parties, regardless of how well or how badly they perform uh, uh, you know, during the period of governance, uh, somehow they always manage to remain in power. Uh, so that gives you an idea that, uh, but again, uh, the fact that this was able to happen uh, it's as a result of so many other dynamics that played out in Senegalese uh, political life. Uh, the fact that uh, the uh, former president heated up the polity at various times uh, in a way that uh, drew the attention of the people uh, to himself and to the failings of his party. Uh, so that became a problem for him. Of course, uh, there was the issue of uh, wanting to you know, have a third term contrary to the uh, provisions of uh, the Constitution that was shut down by a series of demonstrations. And these demonstrations have a way over time as they continue of um, uh, indicting uh, the man at the helm of power even more and bringing new people into the opposition. So all of these things, the opposition grew you know, as, as a result. And then the tendency, the desire you know, at a time the, 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 the uh, suspension of uh, the election uh, for many months also was something that drew the angst of uh, the Senegalese people and also put uh, the president in the eye of the people, I mean, the, the eye of the storm, uh, was also something. And of course, we also saw another series of uh, demonstration and protests and then, of course, the response by the international community uh, to that desire to want to extend. And people saw that as a... Uh, another attempt by the president to extend the stay. So all of these things ended up uh, giving a very bad uh, reputation uh, uh, to the, um, uh, the party in power and uh, to Macky Sall. And so uh, therefore, everything that he did 
was something that was uh, suspected by the Senegalese people who already had uh, you know, a default position, and that is uh, in the opposition itself. And that is, I think, some of the things that helped to galvanize uh, the people against uh, the opposition uh, government. And of course, it is strange because uh, people are going to talk about it. The fact that uh, you have a party in power, which again, is not uh, an African thing. When it happened, we saw what happened in Kenya a few years back. Uh, where the opposition, you know, where the, uh, uh, the party in power lost um, uh, power. It was, it was a novelty in a way, and the people hailed that as a demonstration of, uh, of um, democratic values being imbibed by the people of Kenya. In Ghana, we saw something close to that. And of course, you know that people have been extolling the virtues of uh, Ghana's democratic culture for quite some time. When uh, um, the Rawlings party also lost to the opposition. And then we see this also happening. And then I think these are some of the good things uh, that happen because we know uh, the, the, the ubiquitous uh, presence of uh, um, the uh, party in power, really, when it comes to elections. Since they dominate the that, polity. Yeah. Since you've mentioned that, what are the lessons we can learn? Because we know of that FAI actually ran as an independent. What are lessons that the Nigeria political system and our electoral systems can learn from what we're seeing play out? You've mentioned Ghana. Now we're seeing things unfold in Senegal. What are those lessons, key lessons? Yeah, I think part of the lessons that we have to be learned is that, uh, like somebody has said, that the price we have to pay for our democracy is eternal vigilance. And eternal vigilance means being engaged with the polity by the people themselves. And you can see how the people engage with the Senegalese polity. You see how they responded to every attempt by uh, the president and the party in power uh, to do something they felt was undemocratic. So they responded all, at all times. And it is part of these responses that put pressure on Makisor and not to, to deviate from some of the things that he had wanted to do that were undemocratic. So it was about pressure. Of course, you could say, there's one other thing again. You could say somebody, you know, Makeso could have done what other African leaders you know, have done and insisted that the heaven, heaven can fall, but that this is what he intends to do. And he will always have hangers on, people who depend on him uh, to uh, continually enrich their pockets, who will always advise him that nothing is going to happen. Oga, you know, Your Excellency, just go ahead, nothing is going to happen. But maybe in a way, he also had a priest of conscience, as the French would say, that look, there are implications. If I do this, there are obvious implications. Am I ready for this? And I think the Nigerian president at the time, Jonathan, good luck, good luck. Jonathan was also confronted with the same issue when he now made it that statement, now that famous statement that my ambition is not worth the blood of any you know, Nigerian. Yes. So it was a decision that he, had, that, that he could have taken, he could have gone the other way. We've seen other African countries dear uh, whatever uh, consequences and they go ahead and plunge their country into war. So I think that that is one thing that we should look at. In as much as we might not have been very impressed with Makisol, especially towards the end of his tenure, because before then people said a lot of good things about him. Then all of a sudden he was thinking about a third term. All of a sudden he suspended, I mean, he postponed the election and the rest. But still, the fact that he did, was not willing to go all the way to perpetuate himself and his party in power is something good that could be said about him. But more, more to the resilience of uh, the Senegalese people who understood what democracy and the ideals and the values of democracy and the need to protect their democracy, and they continued along that path. Then another thing again, which we must also Another lesson that has to be learned is that while all these things were happening, the military was on standby, the military was, was in place in Senegal. They did not take advantage, as we saw in Guinea and other parts of you know, uh, the West African sub-region where the politicians misbehaved and did not, you know, uh, the, the so-called uh, dividends of democracy, they were not able you know, to provide it for the people. And then we had protests, we had agitations and all of that. And then the military capitalized on that in those countries to do what they have always done. But for Senegal, it was different. We showed yeah. some level of maturity, you know, by the military establishment to allow the political process play out. And now they are also enjoying, enjoying this. Then maybe lastly again, another lesson, Fay is a president, uh, not by design, he's a president by default because it's most likely that Sonko 
would have been the president. But we know what happened. We have about 30 seconds left with you. What are, what are the challenges you think that Faye might... Well, Faye's biggest challenge, as he said, to become Senegal's next president. No, his biggest challenge is the one, I mean, the same challenge that uh, most African leaders have, all, have fa fa faced and in most cases failed. And that is to deliver on the promises he has made of the people of Senegal. There's hope. Every election comes with hope and expectation from the people. And so he has said he will look at the economy. He has said he will try to bring about political <coughs> you know, stability and a few other things. Let him walk the talk. Like I say, like people say, talk is cheap, but it's the ability to walk the talk that is a critical thing. All right, sweeping defeat. I mean, sweeping victory for Faye. Let's see if he can actually walk the talk, yeah. like you say. Achuke Chude, want to say thank you very much for joining us here on Newsday. Mm -hmm.